Hey, welcome everybody. Appreciate you checking in and uh, reading and watching this uh, 5A bracket breakdown. Well, at least our friends regarding 5A, no controversy at all. Look, look, 5A has been and will be the the ground zero of the public-private battles. It has been for many years and will continue to be. I don't think there's any doubt about it. There are some very vocal public schools and public school administrators involved in 5A and some very powerful private schools in 5A. Well, less in 5A because of, well, the success factor. And the way things are going, probably even less in a year or two. But uh, it is what it is. Let's talk about Class 5A, the bracket that was released. On Saturday night and took about eh, probably about three minutes after it was released for people to be outraged and in controversy and what have you so let's talk about a little bit split two 16 team brackets one through 32 seems to be the battle cry and I don't disagree I, I think if I had my choice if I was edgy Tim running the IHSA God help us on that one huh I would have 1 through 32 seating from 5A on up. Um, you know, if 4A wants to make a case for it and consider it, I'm open to that as well. I just think if you want to eliminate all this battle cry, us against them, them against us, well, there's two solutions. I hate to say won't like my first solution, but it's the God's honest truth in my opinion. You want to eliminate some of this stuff and... You know, I hear a lot of outcry about, wow, why are all these Chicago Public League teams seated? Well, number one, that's the system. There's nothing the Chicago Public League can really do about it. I mean, their teams deserve a chance to play in the playoffs as much as everyone else. But I think the other thing to realize is we have eight classes of playoff football, folks. When you have eight classes of playoff football, you're going to have, I think, a considerable amount of teams that Really shouldn't be in the playoffs, but let's face it, that's history, that's gone, that's never going to change. So we are stuck with eight classes, and we're going to make the best of what we have, and that's what we've done. Um, so that's number one. The other solution, I think, is 1 through 32. Um, that way, no one can argue that there's any hidden agenda from anyone, whether public, private, IHSA. I think it resolves it, and I think it needs to happen as soon as next year. Um, the biggest controversy is Sterling being placed in the south bracket. And again, do the geography. It's not really hard to figure out. You can look at the IHSA map that they provided. Uh, everyone's down here, and then Sterling way up here. Uh, if you want to get technical, it sure as heck looked like I-80 was the dividing line. Uh, I know for a fact, Rich Central is south of I-80, yet Rich Central got sent up north. So... You know, to me, it was a very simple tweak. Move Sterling north, move Rich Central south. Now, I know NAS and JCA fans are all outraged because they're out to get them. Okay, that's if you want to roll with that, that's fine. Well, I disagree with you. Well, no, because let's face it, what do you think, in my opinion, what do you think the success factor is? Pretty simple. So... We're, we're going to deal with what we have. Now, in the north bracket, I mean, certainly Tinley, uh, Tinley Park and Glenbart South, I think, will come out of uh, the upper part there. Um, King will beat DuSable. Uh, again, I said it. I think I think St. Lawrence ends up in a quarterfinal. I really do, and that's number one. I think Lawrence is very underrated this year, number two. I think, uh, and again, Rich Central will be a good game. I actually think. Uh, the Vikings' toughest game for a few rounds could be that first one against Rich Central. But I see St. Lawrence getting through and getting to a quarter. Bottom line is whoever wins NAS JCA round two, will, my guess, will win 5A. Um, so, again, you're going to have to deal with that. Certainly Marion Central Catholic could play a, a spoiler. And I'll tell you what, Nazareth, or not Nazareth, um, Sycamore here is... Uh, it's not a great first-round matchup for Naz. I'm certainly picking Naz to win, but Sycamore, again, one of those uh, very solid traditional 5A teams to watch. So it could be an interesting first-round game, maybe early on for Naz. Um, 
the south bracket, the lower bracket, well, it's good to be Washington, I guess. Um, you know, uh, the winner of Sterling Metamora could be intriguing in round two, but again, I just don't see a whole lot of tests for Washington getting to a quarter. Um, you know, even beyond. Um, you look at it, um, you know, maybe Highland, maybe Sam Champagne Central. Not even sure, to be honest there. I still think Washington in that upper part is the team to watch. Uh, the lower part of 5A South Bracket, I, I've got to say Lincoln Way West, and that's not just being the Chicago homer in me, uh, along with Peoria, to be fair. Peoria is very good. Uh, I picked Peoria to actually get to a state final in the playoff pairing show. Um, if I did it again, I might 50% of the time go Peoria. 50% of the time go to Lincoln Way West. I certainly think the winner out of the south part of this bracket is going to wind up being in a state championship game. So, again, my thoughts on 5A. Got to love 5A, don't we? See you, everybody.